Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy. And today's topic of discussion is fixing a common flaw on old daisies, especially the kind I work on, the ones that are 60, 70, 80 years old. On a daisy, especially the 111 Model 40 Red, light, red Riders, you'll find two different types of uh, rear sights. As you'll notice on this rear sight, that bad boy is broken, snapped off right there. Does happen quite a lot. Now, what uh, if you're going to try to restore this? It makes some, it makes a lot of sense, and it's very important to get your hands on that screw. You cannot buy that replacement screw anymore. It is a particularly shaped screw that allows the rear sight to be elevated on the early production guns and on the late production guns. You'll notice that. It is tack welded. That's what that little red dot there is. So if you want to remove the entire sight stem, you can grab it with a pair of pliers. Once you get the screw out, wiggle it back and forth and it'll pop off. Uh, one technique that can be used to fix these problems is, let's back out and take a look at this. This is an entire rear sight assembly that's been hand fabricated out of 16 gauge steel. It's a pretty close approximation of what the Daisy product looked like. On this other 111 Model 40, which is a copper band gun. The rear sight had separated by itself. And so part of the project on this gun was to get that sight reinstalled. And as you can see, it is now firmly attached to the gun. It has an elevator screw that works. And this uh, unit was silver soldered on. And what we're gonna show you today is the technique we used to do that. That worked out pretty well. It's, the gun is not supposed to have any surface alterations. So I've been very careful not to do that. And as you can see, the uh, silver soldering process didn't affect the sight or the gun metal around it because we just don't get hot enough to make that oxide shift happen like we do with fire blowing. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to shift to the workbench and I'm going to show you how to set this up and get it done. <coughs> okay, now we're on the bench. We've got a uh, target receiver or a sample receiver set up to show you how to do this process. Now, if you've elected to use your fabricated site or the factory original site, the first thing you need to do is get it into position on the receiver and trace an outline on what the site, where the site's tang will actually sit on the receiver. Because you want all that silver solder that we're gonna put on here to stay under here. You don't want it to bleed out to the left or to the right. And once you've got that outline established on the receiver, I like to take painter's paint, good old blue painter's paint, put that around the outline, and then get after it with a hand file either a large one or a small one, but a fine one, and take off any oxide coat or any rust or any surface debris prior to getting ready to using the silver solder. Do the same thing with the underside of your site assembly. Make sure that's clean. Then the next step is to get yourself silver solder paste. This stuff works pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of amazed with it, actually. It's all in one. You don't need multiple components. Just take this stuff, shoot a line of goo, down the center of your work and make sure it stays as small as you can get it. It doesn't take a lot of this stuff, about like so. And you're done. You don't need to put on any more than that. Now the next step is you've got to get the work on the gun and you've got to get it centered up and then clamped. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to take our silver solder applied rear sight. We're going to stick it in a slot that we've decided is where the sight's going to be mounted. We're going to hold that by hand until we get our clamp in place. We're going to slide our clamp down here because the bulk of the solder is going to flow up this way. And then we're going to take a uh, driver and we're going to settle this uh, front sight base down, or rear sight base down. Don't have to clamp the snot out of it, you just don't want it moving when you put the heat to it. Then you've got to line it up, which means the camera has to move so I can see what I'm doing. And there we go. That's lined up inside the lines. It's held securely in place. Now, the cool thing about solder paste, this solder paste, is it's a low temperature flow. So you don't have to blast the snot out of it. And we want to watch this carefully because what we'll see when the solder begins to melt and the rods and starts doing its work, the flux starts doing its work, you'll see it bubbles around the edges of the work. So we'll start our, our flame low, about like that. And we're just looking to heat this up just a touch. Not enough for it to change color, like 550 degrees, but hot enough to get that solder to run. And in a minute or two, or maybe less, we'll begin to see some bubbling action around the base of the site. Oh, I'm seeing it already. And once we get the bubble action going, that tells us that the material has gotten hot enough to 
heat the solder up so it can do its job. We don't want to see it change colors per se, any more than about where we're at right now, because we don't want to get it too hot. And I believe it should be sufficient. Let's go around to the other side and hit it with some heat there. Let's go around to the other side and hit it with some heat there. amber tone on the steel, so we should be in the range. Curiously enough, the uh, vendor says that uh, a match is hot enough to get this solder paste to flow. And several times that I've used it, it seems like it will get the job done about there. Alright, so now we're going to have to wait for a bit, so we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, uh, we've waited an appropriate amount of time. We believe it to be solid. So we're going to remove the ring clamp. Boom, boom. Yep, it's on there good and solid. So now you've got a fairly inexpensive and fairly not so hard to do way to replace a rear sight on a daisy that's lost its rear sight. That's all for today, kids. This is Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy, signing off.